Good day everyone! It's another day of learning. By the way, I am Teacher John and I will be sharing to you how to calculate production inputs and outputs. Are you ready to learn guys? Come on! Let's explore the world of technology and livelihood education. Gathering data is necessary in order to compute and calculate the production of raw materials and ingredients to tabulate the input and output of the finished product. Now, let us proceed with the production function, inputs, and outputs. Let us define one by one. Production function. This represents the limit of output obtainable from its feasible combination of inputs. It relates the maximum amount of income. It gives information about increasing or decreasing returns to scale. Production inputs refers to resources or factors of production used in the production of output. This term is most frequently associated with the analysis of short-run production and is often modified by the terms as fixed and variable inputs. Production outputs refers to the quantity of goods and services produced in a given time of period by entrepreneurs or businesses. Output is the result of economic process that has used to produce a products or services that is available for sale or home use. Net output, sometimes called net put, is a quantity in the context of production, while profit is when a particular quantity of production output is produced. It is deducted by production inputs. The difference is the profit that means income. Meat and seafood products tend to be most expensive part of the menu. They also have significant amounts of waste, which must be accounted for when determining standard portion cost. The losses due to trimmings and cutting must be accounted for in the cost of the meat. This is the actual spoilage and actual rejects. And now, let us define spoilage or waste. This refers to the trimmings, visceral parts, bones, fins of fish, brine, liquids from products derived from transporting or handling, cleaning, preparing or processing. Solid waste from fish processing includes skin, viscera, fish heads, and carcasses or fish bones. Solid waste can be recycled in fish meal plants or it can be treated as municipal waste, while liquid waste includes blood water and brine from drained storage tanks and water discharges from washing and cleaning. This waste may need holding temporarily and can be disposed properly. Let us start computing the cost of your products. But before that, let us first define costing. Costing is the process of listing down the expenses incurred in processing the products to obtain the unit cost in producing the goods. Among the costs considered, are those for raw materials, ingredients, labor, packaging, power, water, and expenses for depreciation, advertisement, or selling price. Through the costing, therefore, you can determine the price at which you should sell your finished products. A simple data of production sheet is needed for the proper costing of food products. And what do you think is the importance of recording and documenting production input? Number one, it gives us a reference data on the materials used together with their correct magnitude. 
Number two, it determines the economic viability of the product. And number three, the records serve as a basis for planning. And number four, the records greatly help with the right decisions. Here is the format of a production report that you can use in documenting and recording. First, we have to include the product name, the production date, description of the materials, other ingredients with their weight, wastage, the input and output, percentage yield, and problems encountered. Wherein production report is a written record showing the input-output relationship in determining the yield from a certain procedure. Description of materials refers to the main ingredient. Example in embutido, ground meat is the main ingredient. Input is the total weight of all ingredients. Therefore, all ingredients must be converted into grams. Output is input minus the wastage. Wastage is the amount or volume of the inedible parts or waste of raw materials being used. It includes skin, seeds, in the core of raw materials. It is necessary to determine wastage to identify the production output, hence it is a must to weigh. And how do we get percentage yield? To get percentage yield, we have to divide output from input and multiply by 100. Therefore, percentage yield is the quotient of input and output multiplied by 100. I have here a sample production report for marinated bangus. Our product name is marinated milk fish. Production date is June 25, 2020. Description of materials is fresh milk fish, which is the main ingredient, and 1,000 grams. Other ingredients include vinegar, calamansi juice, soy sauce, salt, sugar, black pepper, and garlic. Our input is 1,680. This is the total of all the ingredients in grams. We have our output which is equivalent to 1,200. But before that, let us first determine the waste stage to get our output. Wherein the waste stage includes fins, bones, internal organs, skin of the garlic, calamansi seeds, and skin that is equivalent to 480 grams. To get our output, we have to subtract 1,680 grams to 480 grams, and that is 1,220 grams. Let us proceed in computing the percentage yield. We have to divide the output, which is 1,200 grams, to the input, which is 1,680 grams, and multiplied by 100. Therefore, our percentage yield is 71.42% or 71%. We have here the sample production cost of marinated milk fish. Let us first have the raw materials and ingredients. Wherein, in the first column, we have the items. In the second column, the quantity. And in the third column, the weight in grams. And on the fourth column, we have the cost. So, our ingredients are fresh milk fish, vinegar, calamansi juice, soy sauce, salt, sugar, and pepper. And the cost is 174 all in all. Yon yung total ng ating raw materials and ingredients. In our production cost, we have to get the cost of our packaging materials. We will be using jar and label here. 
4 pieces of jar and 4 pieces of labels, we have all in all 62 pesos. And we also have overhead expenditures for our transportation and water that cost 10 pesos each. For our grand total, we also have to add the raw materials, the packaging materials, plus the overhead expenditures. Since our raw materials is equal to 174 pesos, our packaging materials is equal to 62 pesos, and our transportation and water or our overhead expenditures is equal to 20 pesos that is equivalent to 256 pesos. We have four finished products here because we have four jars. So the net weight of our jars or our products is equal to 300 grams. Now, let us get the markup price. Wherein the markup price is equivalent to 20% of our grand total. Ang grand total natin is 256 pesos. Now, we need to multiply 256 times 0.20 and that is 51.20. Let us compute for the selling price. So, yung selling price natin is the sum of our grand total and the markup price divided by the number of finished products. If we have 256 plus 51.20, we will get 307.20 divided by 4 jars. Therefore, our selling price is 76.80 per bottle at 300 grams. That is how a production cost is being made. Did you enjoy our lesson today? That was awesome. And that ends our lesson today. Once again, I am Teacher John. Always remember, in TLE, matututo ka na, kikita ka pa. Till next time, goodbye!